Snow melt and rain have proven a deadly combination across the Midwest and South as floodwater strand drivers flow into homes, prompting rescues, swallowing riverfront parks whole. The death toll, at least six. The Ohio River near Cincinnati is forecast to reach its highest level in more than 20 years by early next week. In Texas, power outages added to the misery. Where water wasn't a menace, it's ice. Jams backing up waterways, causing flooding, accidents, snarling traffic. This morning, an Oklahoma City fire engine racing to a call toppled after hitting a curb on an icy street. No injuries. Air travel has been a headache for thousands for a third straight day. Dallas and Kansas City canceling dozens of flights. And the forecast for the days ahead, not particularly promising. Large bands of rain expected to hover over already soaked ground. A dangerous stretch of weather as winter struggles to keep its grip. Steve, it is a frustrating day for people who still can't get to their homes. These campaign signs surrounded by water are a reminder that this was just an ordinary neighborhood until it turned into a lake yesterday. Right up the street. You carry these over there? Yeah. Got it? I got it. <laughs> Apparently we had heavy rain and our lake is now coming flooding. My garage is flooded. It's gonna be in my house soon. Started really noticing it about two days ago and the lake from from the back, I guess it's a Rockwell there. Lake, just started slowly rising and then today it just today it was took just, over. Like within ten minutes it's everywhere. Karen and Russ, the line of damage out here is about a mile long, and I'm standing in one of the worst hit areas out here. Neighbors tell me that they rushed in around 4 o'clock this morning to find their neighbor's home had collapsed on top of her. Just heard howling winds and uh, debris hitting the house. Came in as quick as it left. When Jennifer Chesham came out of her home at 4 a.m., she found shards of wood and shingles, and her neighbor's home collapsed sticking out from underneath the frame of that house. That's all I saw was her foot. She and her husband started digging. And we just went into, you know, rescue mode, you know, tried to get her out. And luckily the fire department showed up because my husband wasn't able to lift the floor off of her. Johnson County Emergency Management Director Jamie Moore says that a woman and her daughter were immediately taken to the hospital and another person was injured up the road by an uprooted tree. Several homes all across this unincorporated area were damaged. We will be working with the National Weather Service this morning. Uh, they will actually be on site to determine exactly what kind of winds that we had here. One local family says they're counting their blessings after their home all but destroyed, except for their children's room. To the severe weather at this hour, that major winter storm bringing snow, freezing rain, flooding, and a tornado watch in Louisiana for much of the day. That winter storm stretching from Texas to Maine, dangerous flooding in Dallas tonight, a woman rescued from her car in rushing waters, and treacherous ice flipping a big rig on its side on Highway 81 near Decatur, Texas. Tonight, that massive storm cutting across the country, bringing a wintry blast to western parts of North Texas, covering roads with dangerous ice. And to the east in Dallas, a deluge of flooding rain leading to water rescues, even first responders needing help. And overnight, there the rescue underway now. A woman rescued from the roof of a car and a terrifying moment for Lacey Smith and his family. Lightning striking their car, sending his hood flying. Evacuations in Indiana and southwest of Chicago as rivers there continue to rise. And tonight, you can see how much the Trinity River has come up here in Dallas. And this is far from over, David. The rain continues to fall. And in the coming days, another half a foot is expected from Texas and across the heartland, David. Waterfront property is usually a hot commodity, but not today, not in Lansing, not like this. It just started coming in, and, then my, oh. and, uh, and I got scared, and uh, I just take all the fuses out of the fuse box. Steve Gosher didn't evacuate with his neighbors yesterday, and now he's living on the water, nearly in the water. His basement can't hold much more. Now there's like four and a half feet of water down the basement, almost to the top of the stairs, and oh my gosh. the washing machine is floating and stuff. What isn't floating is sinking or submerged from cars to gas stations, even restaurants. City officials say hundreds of homes have been flooded, numerous roads closed, leaving Mikhail Navarre Williams looking for a new way to get to work. But residents are still worried. It seems like water is still coming in, and 
I know rain is forecast. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't look good, and so I got like no heat, no electricity or anything. Well, Erica, right now we're in an area that has seen evacuations, motorboat rescues, and we just learned just a few minutes ago, just a short distance from here at 23rd Court and Clay Street, NIPSCO crews are on that scene there. They are cutting electricity to about five homes. The reason? What you see right here behind me, water converging on those homes. The Lake Station Fire Department uses motorboats to evacuate eight people. 20 homeowners are evacuated near 27th Avenue and Arizona Street as the water rises six to eight feet in the area. Roughly around 730 is when we had to start really uh, coming into the areas, uh, warning people of the water coming up and uh, trying to get them to evacuate on their own. The rushing and quickly rising water of the deep river is causing serious concerns for business owner John Rosgani. The river is next to his industrial welding machine repair shop, and the river is at the edge of the parking lot. The river's right behind us, about another foot, and we'll be flooded out. And you know from experience. Ten years ago, same thing. We had it knee deep for about a week, so mm. yeah, it's pretty bad. Mayor is sounding the alarm for this weekend. He tweeted that city is preparing for the worst flooding it's seen since Hurricane Ivan in 2004. That storm brought nearly six inches of rain in 24 hours to the Pittsburgh area and caused severe flooding in Millville, Etna, Carnegie, and other places. Meantime, a flooding isn't just something that we are dealing with here in the tri state. There are concerns across the Midwest, too. Alex Perez reports now from Indiana, where a state of emergency has been issued there. There are actually two swollen rivers in this area, and this is what a lot of the neighborhoods here look like right now, completely underwater. Now, the rain has been creating some major problems from Texas all the way through the heartland. Rivers across parts of the Midwest are at major flood stage. Crews across the area rescuing stranded students. Even these horses in Lake Station, Indiana, had to be led through neck deep water to safety. In Green Bay, Wisconsin, this United flight skidded off the runway during freezing rain and wet conditions. And making matters worse, a lot of these waterlogged areas are now bracing themselves. More rain expected in the next couple of days. Marcells in LaSalle County, southwest of Chicago, the situation is so serious that officials have issued a mandatory evacuation order. It affects people south of the IM Canal and east of Main Street. The city also is now asking for volunteers to help with sandbagging at the sewage treatment plant there. We couldn't get out. I mean, it was just, it was already flooded all the way around the house. Finally pulled the plug. <laughs> I held out as long as I could, but it was just a losing battle at that point. It wasn't bad in the boat, you know, and luckily there's, there's not that much ice you know, around the house. We always expect the ice jam, but you don't expect it to go like this. This is really, really high. I've had my place for 30 years, and this is the highest I've ever seen it. Tuesday's Brady Gillum is live near Kalamazoo with the worsening situation there. He has that angle of our story tonight. Brady? Well, good afternoon. Uh, worsening situation indeed. Now, we have been along the Kalamazoo River all morning in Comstock Township and Kalamazoo Township. Uh, right now, we are in the Lakewood neighborhood, and you can see the floodwaters have risen quite dramatically here in the last uh, 24 hours. Now, there have been several houses that have been affected by the rising water. In one instance, we talked to a woman who had lived in the same house for 60 years. She said this is the worst flooding she has ever seen. Several people and animals are safe this morning, though, thanks to help from strangers. CBS 2's Mike Puccinelli joins us live from Gary from the scene there. Hi there. Good morning, Mike. Hi, good morning. We're here at 25th in Colorado. I'll step out of the way so we can give you another look at that scene. There actually is a horse right in that area. We saw the horse a little while ago. It was up to its neck in water, but it has since moved out of the view of our eyes and also the camera lenses at this point. Now, these are, of course, our animals that have been trapped in flood water. So far this morning, they have pulled out at least half a dozen horses and ponies. 
Here you can see the latest rescue, which is happening right now via chopper to the animals, of course, were in danger of drowning. And that's why they got out here right away. They said they had to do something or they felt like they could have many animals that would have perished in these rising floodwaters. Now across town near 29th in Utah, firefighters saved some dogs that have been trapped in a home there. Then a homeowner got in the boat to lead firefighters to his house to rescue his dog. So it's not just horses that they're trying to save today as well. They're also trying to save canines that are trapped in the flood war. Now, overnight, nine horses and ponies were saved in all. One stable manager spoke about the difficult job her husband and others faced as they tried to rescue the large animals. Four feet of water back on our land. Our horses were stuck. The water was up to the pony's shoulder when we went home. He had to go in by canoe. Across Aurora. The river's coming up. It's going to get us. You can hear it. And uh, it brings all the mud and the debris, and we got a mess in our backyard when it goes down. Toot Myers isn't worried for her house on the hill, but she is worried for her neighbors. It'll go up real bad, and then it'll go down and leave the mess. So Mother Nature sure playing hell with us now. Each hour, it seems a new road washed out. This truck deciding not to take the chance. Right now, fire and rescue crews are mobilizing to move people out of parts of downtown, all the way from the river up to George Street. One of the businesses is Aurora Tire Center. We're going to be we're going to be out of work for a while, you know, and a lot of people's going to be out of their homes and out of work. You'll hear a lot of comparisons today to 1997. But for the people who live and work here, it's not a competition. It's kind of heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. It's life on the river. Yeah, all the destruction, everything, all the people that has to go through. So back out here live, Mayor Donnie Hastings told me again just in the last hour that there is a Red Cross shelter opening up at Lawrenceburg High School, and they have brought in help from uh, across the county here to help with any kind of uh, 911 calls, any help that uh, calls for help that get called in that are non emergency, and they are going to have much of downtown closed likely starting tonight. They're going to keep track of this water and move those road closed and high water signs as needed. Locals here in Eugene say they usually have to deal with flooding this time of year. However, they say this year has been worse. I spoke with locals here today, including one woman who says she's thankful for her community despite the flooding. Yeah, I mean, every year we always have to fight something, but this year it's a, it's a lot worse. Teresa Bucos lives next to the Vermilion River. Days of rain have created a flooding situation through Eugene, Indiana. Many roads are underwater and residents are bracing for waters to rise even more. Bucos says she is used to flooding, so she has been preparing her home. Everything's upstairs. The boys done a fantastic job. They took all the furniture upstairs, they've taken the TVs upstairs, they, they've done everything. I have no first floor, so, you know, so that's going to protect most of the stuff that we have. Utah says she was surprised when dozens of volunteers stepped up to sandbag around her home. Down here working really hard, putting sandbags together. Um, it's overwhelming come down here to see how many people all day long has been great. Despite what looks to be a major flooding situation, Bucos admits she loves living near the Vermilion River. And we appreciate it. The community is fantastic. I love my community. But, and I love my river, but she's a little mad right now. <laughs> this bend in the Ohio River across from West Point near Rosewood, Indiana says it all. See that tree line in the middle of your screen? Everything to the left is flooded. A lot of pasture land swallowed up by rising water. Home setting alone like islands, no way in, no way out. Old glory still waving proudly, even though standing on unsteady ground. Along Highway 111, a golf cart decides it has come far enough. A little further up, the driver of a pickup truck has reached a watery dead end. A boat is tied up along the roadway. Folks displaced by the rising Ohio have set up camp as close to their homes as they can get. Not much left to do, but sit back and watch. Next stop for the news chopper, up river at Horseshoe Casino, which really has been turned into a floating casino. It has been closed since this weekend. Spring rains have cost the casino millions of dollars and sent diehard gamblers elsewhere. 
Even though closed, there are those who lost big traveling the road to Horseshoe over the past few days. You can see vehicles peeking from the muddy water along Highway 111. In New Albany, just off Charlestown Road near I-265, a neighborhood is isolated, not by the Ohio, but by the flooded Silver Creek.